All right, so this is video number two. This video focuses on the properties of logarithms and expanding and condensing, which is something that you have to be able to do to find derivatives and integrals of logarithms. So if you need to pause this video at any point, pause it. If you need to rewind, please rewind. But we're going to do it here for you in the second period. Appreciate that, Nick. I also did on my paper notes too. That's why I have you guys to keep me accountable. So generally speaking, a log is an exponent. Say yes to doing your homework, Aaron. Generally speaking, a log is an exponent. Okay. Here are some basic properties. Is there any way to just learn these basic properties without looking at them and maybe studying them? No, you might have to read these over a few times, write them out a few times, do the homework. Okay, first one is the easiest one. Okay, logarithms of the number one. What's up? Hey, I was just showing them my wedding photos. Our wedding photos, not mine. Yep. What are you here for again? Oh, that's right. Thanks. So. Well, love you. See you. Talk about perfect timing with the whole wedding and everything. I forgot she was on campus today. She is a PsyD student at Wheaton College, and sometimes they do some like counseling stuff and practicum <laughs> oh, stuff over there. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's a one. <laughs> the logarithm of one is always zero. <laughs> you shushed her? Yeah. Why would you do that? <laughs> This video can always sacrifice for my wife. So, if you find the natural log of the number one, bring it back, fellas. Bring it back. It's always zero. No hesitation. But here are some properties that are not as automatic, okay? If you have natural log of an exponential, then the exponent is just the answer, okay? The inverse is cancel. If you have the same number here, like if you see a 2 here and a 2 here, these are shortcuts that I just want you to memorize. If you, if, the, if you see the same base of the logarithm as the same base on the inside, then once again, you just have x. It's like those numbers kind of, they cancel out, okay? Once again, part A and part C are literally the same, but the top one's a logarithm, and then C is an exponential, but they still cancel. Once again, inverses cancel, right? And then down here, we have the same base with the same base. They cancel again. So these are just shortcuts for you to kind of save you some time, all right? And for those who, if you're in sixth period, you can either ask Jackie because he could probably teach it better than I can, or you can look in the textbook on these these sections. Okay. Here's some examples. Let's go rapid fire. Okay. Just this is look textbook as a resource. Okay. What's the natural log of e? Let's let's call it out. Ln of e one. Ln of e squared, 2. Uh-oh, ln of 1 over e. It's the same thing as ln of e to the negative 1. So what is ln of e to the negative 1? It's just negative 1. So you might have to do some rewriting. What about number 4, e to the ln of 4? 4. 4, they cancel again. They're inverses. Don't forget, they are inverses. What about 5? These numbers are the same. So what happens? These numbers are not the same, so what happens? Two to the two to the what power equals eight? Yep. Three. This is not three. Close. Log. Yeah, this is tricky. How do we get from five? So five to the what power equals one over the root of five. It's got to be negative, and it's got to be one half. 
It's got to be a square root and a negative. The guy I pointed to. Chill. Number eight. Number eight. If the log doesn't have a base, then it's an imaginary 10 there. Okay? Log, if this is a base of 10 and this is a base of 10, the answer is just that. Okay? It's just like number 8 is just like this example D. All of these, if you need to go back, they kind of correlate with those things. Okay? Now for the good stuff. This is my favorite part with logarithms. You've got three, three properties. You've got the product property. We'll just say product rule for short. We've got the quotient rule. Always a product and quotient rule, and this isn't even derivative, but this is just regular pre-calculus. Here's the product rule. If you ever have a log that has a base, and then there are two things being multiplied inside of it, you see that? That's the, the xy is the product. Then you can split that up into two different logarithms with a plus sign. That is the key. Okay, we go in-depth with this in pre-cal and in Algebra 2. We're just kind of reviewing. But when you have a product, they separate with a plus. Because remember, what are logarithms? They're exponents, right? What do you do when you multiply two exponents together? You, you add that trash. So that's what happens. Okay. Quotient rule. Log base B of x over y. What do you think you do when you divide? So you can split it up into two. Very nice. With a subtraction. Okay, so that's the quotient rule. And then the product rule. Or the power rule. Sorry, I was wondering if we're, we're close on time. Here's the, here's the power rule. It's very simple. That is an A. If you have a logarithm that has an exponent, then you need to bring that exponent down front. Just like that. Okay? So let's do a couple examples, and then I'll give you some time to work on the homework. Example 1 says evaluate, and notice... Well, when it says evaluate, you just take it piece by piece. You read a problem left to right. So we have log base 2, 6, minus log base 2 of 15. How can we rewrite that as one logarithm, just those first two? Yep. Let's reduce that fraction, though. Log base 2. What is 6 over 15 reduced? Yes, sir. Good math. Plus log base 2 of 20. Now, how can we write those as one? Let's go one more step. What would we have? Log base 2 of what? Yes, I saw the wheels turning. 2 times 20 is 40 on top. 40 divided by 5. So this would turn into that. Because you multiply. Why do we multiply? Plus sign. And now I think we can solve this. 2 to the what power is 8? There we go. Okay. All right, this one's a little more tricky. Somebody impress me and tell me what that equals, because it actually just equals a number. Wait, I got it. Impress me here. Close, but no. Huh? I'm. Wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna get it. No, wait. Oh, it's two hundred. It's two hundred. Because it's 4 to the what power equals, and then 16 to the 100, well, couldn't we just say that's the same thing as 4 squared and make that 200, like that? See what I'm saying? 16 is 4 squared. So I guess we could write it like this if you wanted. Make it a little more. So then what does x equal? It just equals 200. So technically, I mean, this is just helping you solve it. You just need to look at that and kind of do the work and get 200. But then we still have all this stuff. How can we combine this? Ignore the 200. Let's just combine those two logarithms. 
what do you get? 200 plus log 2 of 4. You just multiply the 6 and the 2 thirds. Because when you have a plus sign, you just multiply. So log 2 of 4. Which 2 to the what power is 4? 2. So that just equals 2. So 200 plus 2. So when you evaluate, just kind of go left to right. Do what you can. Do what you can. Combine. And you'll get your, your answers eventually. Two more examples and then you'll be, you'll be ready to go. If you see use the laws of logarithms to simplify and you see how it's all in different pieces, we need to combine it into one piece. We need to condense. This is the condensed section. This is the expand section right below it. You, see, you clearly see the difference between 3 and 4 and 5 and 6. Yeah. 3, 4, really spaced out. 5, 6, really bunched up. So here's how we do it. We do these properties, but we do them in reverse. If you see two logarithms with a plus sign in between them, we need to start smushing it together, right? So this will turn into what? Which, since those are a difference of two squares, it'd just be a squared minus b squared, right? But then how do we, what do we do with that? Minus two natural log of c. What do we do with him? We divide it. When, when you're condensing, when it says simplify or condense, your final answer has to have one logarithm in it. Ooh, what do you do with that two? Power rule, it goes back here and then it goes down there. Yep, it's the power rule. So then this, this would be your final answer. We took it from one, two, three different logarithms down to just one. We condensed it. Try number four on your own. Okay, for sixth period, I'm actually going to stop the video here and work with second period. But you can see the next section is literally just you do all the rules in reverse. So when you see these things being multiplied here, you split them up with this plus sign. When you see it divided, you split it up with, oh, that should have been a, a minus sign. Because when it's division, it's minus. And where do the exponents go? For the square root, the one half went down front. For the two, it went down front. Okay, use this and work on the textbook. 5.1 problems 19 through 37. You can see this on the module.